session. Uh, my name is Shenren Xu from Pitt University, and I will be the uh, session chair. So given we're already five minutes uh, late, so I probably will just uh, skip the first preview session. And uh, uh, we will have uh, four exciting talks from uh, Eastwick and three talks uh, from uh, Eastwick, uh, four, four talks from uh, Imwat, UbiConf, and three from uh, Eastwick. And uh, let's uh, have the first talk, uh, which title will be Focal Point Adaptive Direct Manipulation for Selecting Small 3D Virtual Objects. It will be presenting by uh, Jia Yuma. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's uh, welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, to see you all here. Kind of nervous to be the first presenter. OK, everyone. Uh, OK, thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jia Yuma. And I'm currently a PhD student at Stanford University. Uh, I'm here to present focal point, a bimanual selection technique for interacting with tiny 3D virtual objects in smartphone augmented reality. This work was done when I was at Brown University. Uh, we chose smartphone as the AR platform because it's easily accessible and widely available. In focal point, the user would hold the smartphone to see AR objects with one hand and interact with the virtual world uh, with the other hand through direct manipulation. To detect hand motions, we use the motion hand tra tracker. Uh, but I want to emphasize that our technique is independent of the tracking mechanism. In fact, we have uh, made a demo application with a software-only hand tracking algorithm uh, that I'll talk about later. Um, the problem that we're addressing in this work is the fat finger problem in the 3D virtual world. When an object becomes very small, a single fingertip can cover many of uh, these objects when they're close together. Also, these densely packed objects can occlude each other, and this makes accurate selection very difficult. To address this problem and design the focal point technique, we first conducted a formative study where we asked participants to grab virtual objects in a freeform ma manner to learn about their selection behavior. By plotting the positions uh, at which these objects were selected, uh, as shown in the pink dots here, we found that they form clusters of varying sizes. We refer to these clusters as focal regions. And we believe that objects placed within these regions have a higher chance of being selected by the user. So based on this insight, we record the string positions of the 10 most recently selected objects that update the focal region to encapsulate these points. We project the focal region outward to form the selection cylinder. Objects within double the radius of the cylinder become candidate objects to be selected. To review occluded objects, we attach an occlusion plane to the hand and objects that fall behind the plane become transparent. To select the target object, the user would aim the center of the focal region at it and move their hand closer to the target to pro perform a pinch gesture. In addition, we also change the opacity of objects based on how far they're away from, this, uh, from the phone and the interacting hand that hel uh, to help user perceive depth. So compared to other selection techniques in this space, we are the only behavior-driven direct manipulation technique that supports uh, selection of occluded targets. And we, we can select objects as small as three millimeters, which is considerably smaller than the other techniques. So we designed two tasks to evaluate focal point against the generic baseline and recruited 12 participants. The first task is to select a three millimeter wide blue cube out of a pile of yellow cubes. Each participant performed three practice trials to, to initialize the focal region and then completed uh, 15 formal trials. As you can see here, focal point enables the user to more efficiently and quickly locate and select target objects. Here are some quantitative task results. Overall, focal point increases the selection accuracy by threefold, improved the selection speed significantly by 5.5 seconds on average, and users are in general more satisfied with using focal point for this task. The second task is to decorate a virtual Lego house with tiny Lego pieces from a large bowl. We designed this task to be an activity that the participants are very likely to encounter in their daily lives uh, to show the practicality of our technique. So we provide the participants with a plain Lego house and a virtual ball filled with Lego pieces. The pieces come in five different designs. We ask the participants to build, first build this red and white pillar, and then they can, free, they can freely decorate the Lego houses as they wish. Here are some decoration results. The first row is made with focal point, and the second row is, uh, shows the, this, uh, the baseline condition. Um, as you can see, 
people with focal point are, are able to either decorate more pieces, like in these panels, or they can create more deliber deliberate designs, like this uh, house that, that's been decorated with all green pieces. To demonstrate how focal point can be applied in complex AR tasks and how it facilitates interactions that were previously difficult to do, we created three demo applications. The first one is robotics technician, a game in which the user can bypass the outer shell of a broken robot to directly take out damaged components for repair. The second application is a tool for creating 3D models in situ. A user can directly design 3D models when they're physically in the space they're designing for, referencing physical objects for scale and the environment for style. Focal point enhances the workflow of this tool in two ways. Firstly, it helps the user to accurately select and manipulate small components of the model. Uh, sorry. Firstly, it helps the user to recognize the small, the small control points uh, of a 3D shape. Uh, for, for operations like scaling uh, without, without the need of additional UI, uh, like what's being shown here. And secondly, focal point enables fine adjustments of intricate 3D models by enabling the user to accurately select and manipulate small components of the model. In this example here, the user can pick up and move the small shutter button of the camera. Prior studies have shown that visualizing complex neural networks can help researchers better understand and debug them. So inspired by this, we built our third and out last application, the 3D Neural Network Visualizer, with a self-layer-only setup for tra hand tracking to demonstrate the flexibility of focal point and its independence from the tracking mechanism. Here, we visualize a simple network that recognizes handwritten digits. It has an input, la input layer of the image at the bottom, two hidden layers, and an output layer. Each tiny cube either represents a neuron in the network or a pixel that makes up the digit. Focal point allows the user to select the neurons to see their weights and biases, as visual visualized here by the connecting lines of different colors. A common way to study and understand neural network in deep learning is to perform an ablation study, where part of a network is removed or turned off. Here in our application, focal point allows the user to accurately choose and remove neurons from the network to perform this study. After the removal, the user can retrain the network and select neurons again to see how these weights and biases and the classification of digits have been affected. So to summarize, we contribute focal point, a direct manipulation technique that allows people to interact with tiny 3D virtual objects as small as three millimeters. We demonstrate that this technique allows the user to move efficiently to like target occluded ob objects in a densely packed environment and can be applied to daily tasks like playing with Lego. We further show the usability of focal point through three example applications. So with this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you so much for listening, and please refer to our paper for me more details. Thanks, Dashi, for the nice talk. Uh, while the next presenter can prepare his laptop, we have time for one quick question. Do we have any questions from the audience? I have a quick one. So if, if you apply your technology to the smart glass for augmented uh, reality, what will, what's the new challenge? What will happen? Uh, yeah, this is, thanks for the great question. So uh, we thought about this, uh, we, we discussed this briefly in the paper uh, about how this can be ported to, um, uh, to like uh, head-mounted displays, um, you know, including smart glasses. Um, so one challenge would be to find like an equivalent metaphor of smartphones in you know, in the, w without having an actual, uh, actual smartphone. So one thing that we think could, uh, would still work is the idea of the focal region. So we think it will persist in, in uh, HMDs where people would probably still have a preferred region to look at and then select objects. Uh, but that's, I think that needs some further study. Thanks. Let's thank the speaker again. So our next speaker is Anata Narayan from uh, National uh, University of Singapore. Uh, he will be presenting Retrosphere, self-contained passive 3D controller tracking for augmented reality. <laughs>